Hi everyone, this is Mira, uh, and I am back with a new video to give you guys a look at our new beta build. Let's get started. First off, you'll notice that we've added a bunch of new icons to the layer window. Those include masking options, including clipping masks, and we also have a layer grouping option and adjustment layers. So just a very quick kind of overview on masking. Um, masking allows you to change the opacity of different areas through a single layer using the grayscale values. Black being the shade that masks at 0% opacity, while white paints at 100% opacity. Applying a clipping mask to a layer means you're only drawing over the visible contents of the layer below, and you cannot paint outside of those bounds. Alright, moving on. Uh, a pretty big feature that we've added is the layer properties window where you'll be able to play with a lot of crazy controls. Simply double click a layer to bring this window up. If you go to blending, you'll see uh, layer blending is a thing and we have it. Uh, so any kind of settings like multiply, uh, subtract, dissolve, etc, etc. Those are things that are now at your disposal. And if we go back to general, you'll see the wrapped option from document settings is now a per layer option. So if I check this and hit OK, I can tile back around the canvas no problem. Per layer halftone is also possible. You can check this box and play with a local opacity slider and it'll only be tied to the specific layer. You can also do regular halftone stuff with your stylus by changing the pen pressure, the opacity. The last few things to cover here are exported grid, which uh, essentially lets you export your image with the grid in view. You can change the color of the grid and do sort of any kind of funky stuff with that. And what's even more exciting are the post effects. This is where you get a crazy amount of flexibility and playtime with your painting. We have blur, curves, distortion, hue saturation, linear blur, motion blur, pass through, rabbitude, and smear. The ones I want to show you in this particular video are distortion and curves. With distortion, you can control how much of it you want on your layer, as well as the speed of it. What does the speed have to do with it? Well, this is where the fun starts. We go to timeline, and we add a bunch of frames and hit play, voila. You have a wobbling, isometric, watermelon hue. Okay, if we go back to the layer properties window, I wanna add curves to do some color changes along the animation. Once I add curves, and anytime I add any post effects for that matter, you'll notice it gets added to the stack on the left, right under my layer. So before we make any color changes, let's hit the key button next to curves. This will record any changes you key at the cell you've double clicked along the curves track. So let me just put a key here on frame 10 and change around the colors. And I'll also do that at the very end at frame 20. Hit OK. And Play it back and you'll see the colors are being changed along the animation. And now we have a smooth, distorting, color-changing ISO cube. You can use adjustment layers and document properties to create post effects as well. If you add an adjustment layer, whatever changes you make will apply to the layers below it. Whereas if you double-click on document properties and make changes here, these changes will apply to the document at all times. Okay, so another super common request we've received along the journey of Hexels is transforms. And I'm very happy to announce that they have been implemented. We have two kinds of transforms happening, free transform and layer transform. Free transform can be found as a subsetting of the selection tools. So if you go to marquee, for instance, you'll see the icon up here. To make a free transform happen, you have to make your selection first and then hit the icon. Now if I scale and rotate with a free transform, you'll notice my trixels are constrained and snapping to the grid. And that's all cool and all, but 
say I don't want that. Say I'm looking for something a little extra, something a little bit more flexible. Uh, in this case, I'll turn my attention to layer transforms. The layer transform tool can be found right above the frame tool icon. Or you can simply hit T and the transform tool widget will show up. Now the fun thing about layer transforms is that you're not just playing with the contents of your layer, you're also manipulating the entire grid. So if I rotate, the entire grid is rotating. If I'm scaling, the grid is scaling too. Now, a reminder as to why this is extremely cool is that you're manipulating the grid on this one layer only. You can create an entirely new layer and have a completely different grid to the one you just played with. And because we thought that wasn't quite enough, we have also added tiling options tied into layer transforms. If you go back to layer properties and check wrapped, then go to scale, and you scale down your contents or scale them up, you'll see multiple instances of your cube happening at once. And if you decide to draw something else, you'll see multiple instances of what you're painting. If you only want to preview tiling, you can go to your document settings and ramp up the wrapping preview slider. Painting off canvas is also possible. You can key your layer transforms and the grid changes will happen along your animation according to how you key things. Finally, we've got some new options in the timeline settings. It's also the new home to the frame rate box. Tweening makes your animation smoother by adding in-between frames when exported. Looping options change the last frame in your animation to match up with your first. There's also tweening curve options for your animated properties. The default is linear, but if we wanted the hue to snap, we right-click the keyed cell and select the stair step curve. We're currently collecting feedback and sharing content in the Hexel's Facebook user group, so go ahead and join in. You'll find the installers for Mac and PC in the pinned post. Thank you very much.